I, I was still making over a thousand dollars. So yeah, when, when you work in the farms, everything you do is according to the seasons. The mango season was two months. The lemon-lime season is, was a all-year-round fruit. And the avocado was a month-and-a-half season. When a fruit is all around season, what happens is uh, it goes according to the farmer. So the farmer will go we're picking too much, we're not picking enough. Tomorrow, uh, the demand is not high, so I only need like, I don't know how many cartons. So everybody picks only one bin or, okay, tomorrow uh, you can go all out. We've got a lot of demand this week. A season like that, you can expect either a lot of work or not a lot of work. Like one time, a wet season came, you couldn't pick this fruit when it was raining. So, it rained for 28 days straight, so for almost a month there was no work, you know. So you have to put this into consideration. Okay, uh, so right now in Australia, uh, almost everywhere works with hourly rate, but there are still some places that work with piece rate. Piece rate can be a bit of uh, it's the two extremes, I would say. I've heard, but not experienced, about people working on um, berry farms where they get really low wages because it's piece rate and it's hard to pick. Like, there's the fruits aren't big and this and that. When I was on the lemon lime farm, it was piece rate and the money was really, really good. It was a bit harder to pick because uh, uh, lemon and lime trees have thorns so you you'd get scratched up when i started the bin price was super right it was about 120 dollars a bin which was really good because in a day you could pick two to three bins you know uh, but at this end uh, when i before i left some people were working with us and they picked so many bins uh, they would sometimes pick six seven bins because piece rate uh, you can work as much as you want you know uh, so these people were picking a lot of bins so the the offer was more than the demand so what happened is at the end they were offering 70 dollars a bin so you had to pick a lot more just to be able to keep with the things and the more you pick there's less big fruits you know so it was a lot harder to do these bins sometimes you'd have to spend two three hours doing one bin because all the fruits were too small the piece rate is really hard and it's kind of a Either it's really good or it's bad. Hourly work, I would say in the end, is good, but you can't think that you can just uh, not pick a lot and still have your full salary. Like when I was working on the mangoes, uh, we were a team, I think we were eight or something in a team, and you had to pick a minimum of like 16 bins in a day or else they'd start making changes, if you know what I mean. And when I worked on avocado, also, there was a two bin minimum a day, even though it was hourly pay, they were like, if you don't pick two bins today, you're going to be in danger of being fired. So it's like people say, oh, I'm going to go there and do hourly rate and not work hard. Well, you have to work, still have to work hard because you're in danger all the time. When you work in uh, farm work, uh, uh, you, you can just put yourself in their position. You know, uh, the fruits are about to be ready. All of a sudden, you need a hundred workers to pick those fruit. So it's like you hire, you hire, you hire, you hire. And I must say, it's hard work. You know, you're sometimes uh, ten hours, ten to twelve hours a day in the in the sun. Most of these jobs, they're at least six days a week. And some, some they ask if you want to be stay there for the seventh day. And, you know, it's, it's a hard day's work. When I started working in Mango, I think we were 150. And three days later, we were 80. Because people don't expect it to be that hard. It's very hard in the sun and 
you know, uh, with mangoes, there's mango rash. You see, every type of fruit or vegetable is hard to pick. I've heard stories about potatoes where, oh my god, at the end of the day your back hurts. I've heard stories about uh, pineapple where you have to be very fast and you're always bent down, so it's pretty hard. Same for uh, berries, you know, I heard it's a very hard job to do, always bending down. Uh, I would say mango is easy to pick, but uh, there's mango rash. So when you peel the mango, at the tip, some juice comes out, and when it spreads on you, you can get a rash from it. So there, there's a technique to it. But it's a good fruit to pick because it's pretty big. Uh, same thing for avocado. Avocado has to is a delicate fruit, so it's really good to pick because you have to be very delicate, and you have a little bit more time to pick, I could say. Lemon lime, they've got thorns in the bushes, so you're putting gloves up to your elbow and you're, you put your shirt up over it, and even at the end of the day you've got scrapes and uh, bruises from getting the, the lemon and lime. I wouldn't say it's a crazy difficulty and everything, but uh, it can be hard working, you know, you have to be ready for it. These farmers, they're not there to look at you uh, do nothing all day. If they go by and they see you not working, they're gonna be telling you, they're gonna be, hey, you gotta get back to work faster, 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 because fruit is time sensitive. You know, it's if you don't pick fast enough, they're gonna rot. So they want you to go fast, yeah. The conditions uh, vary, I would say, per farm. Uh, I've been on a farm where it was more laid back and you were left to do what you want. And I've been on a farm where the farmers, they follow you around and they tell you what to do. They like look over your shoulder, if I could say. Uh, so the conditions vary a lot, you know. But in the end, it's all hard working. You have to be in a mindset of doing that. You can't think, oh, I'm on a holiday and I'm just going to go pick a bit of fruit, you know. You have to be, okay, I'm working today, go. There is a positive side uh, to working in farms. First of all, you get to see the sheer work it takes. You know, when you go to the, the, the grocery store after and you see these fruits and vegetables, you know an effort that's been done to pick these fruits and vegetables. I would say I, after that I really appreciate it more. Uh, also, you get this fam familiarity with uh, all your co-workers. You start off and you don't know anybody and you're working on these farms. And at the end, you know all these people, you know. You, you see these nice people that you like to be along with and very different cultures, you know. You can see a uh, there was people from the islands, there's people from New Zealand, there's people from Australia, I, I saw some Chinese, Japanese, uh, Italians. Uh, uh, one time in a share house, I think there was eight people from eight different cultures. So it's very nice to meet people and you know, everybody's in the same situation as you. So that's a very nice thing to see. I remember when I was back at the share house and every, we started doing potlucks and uh, everybody, oh, I'm gonna bring a dish from Indonesia, I'm gonna bring a dish from Africa, I'll bring a dish from uh, Japan, I'll bring a dish from Italy, I'll bring a dish from Canada. It was very nice for that, you know, the familiarity with the people. I would say that was the best thing, you know. A stable income uh, in farm work, I would say, is very possible. But you have to always be be aware of these uh, shortages between seasons. So you'll be on a regular pay uh, because you'll earn a good amount of money, but because you're working long hours a day and usually it's six days a week. So yeah, you, you can get a pretty good income. That's why a lot of people do it, raise money and then move on to go do something else. You know, it's, it's uh, seasonal work. Uh, but the pay is, is, is still good, but you have to be somebody who saves money. If you go there and every day you buy alcohol or uh, 
every couple of days you go out and drink with your friends or be a bit more party or always going to the restaurant, I would say it's the same as any other job. You won't, you won't save as much money as you think. Uh, but if you're somebody who can save money and if you're planning to save your money for the rest of your trip, well then it's definitely possible, you know, you can get as much money as you want. You just gotta cut your expenses. I would say, yeah, you can get a really good amount of money out of the farms. How did you get the farm job to other farm job? Like, because you have like five, ten other farm work, how you get them all? Okay, so to get my farm work, I would say I'm a pretty lucky guy uh, because my wife has a lot of contacts in Indonesia and it was pretty easy to get them or else there's many ways to get them. First of all, uh, get close to a farming town and you will see all these jobs, you know, uh, uh, like head to Mariba and all of a sudden when the season arrives, they need 150 workers and there's 10 farms so they need a thousand five hundred workers in the matter of a couple of days so it's kind of pretty easy to find these jobs but you have to still be at the right place to find these jobs I would say look on Facebook uh, there's a lot of Gumtree uh, pre-COVID it was harder to find uh, the farm job because there was a lot of backpackers. Now with COVID, they need to uh, quarantine people to do all these things. So I would say it's easier now to find it because there are more needed people, there's less people, and you have to be more, uh, you know, they'll say, oh, okay, in one month, this season of avocado is starting. So we're gonna need 100 employees. So you know where to go and that you need to quarantine before. So I would say right now it's a bit easier, but on regular terms to find these jobs, there's all sorts of ways. There's agencies, there's, uh, like I say, you can look on Facebook. Uh, so most of the time, word to mouth is where you'll find it. Like you'll find some people and they'll go, hey, look, uh, I just finished working in a farm at this place and you want to take over. Or, I just finished doing this. Do you want to take over there? So yeah, that's, that's how you find that work, you know. Okay, so when you're working on farms, like I like I said a bit earlier, uh, it's seasonal work, so you got to be prepared to move, and that's something that uh, people have trouble doing. They like, I'm going to go to a town and I'm going to stay there for three months and do my farm work, but sometimes it doesn't work out like that. Because uh, I'll give you my personal experience. Uh, so I went to this town to start working on mango, and I worked there for a month, and then all of a sudden, oh. Mango season is done, we don't need anybody anymore. There's two weeks vacation, and then you're like, okay. And then all of a sudden, ah, oh, no, finally there's no more work for this guy, you can't work, so you're, you're like, ah, oh, okay. Uh, then you try to ask people around that are working with you and stuff like, okay, what are you doing? Where are you going? What are you, what's happening with you? They will tell you like, oh, uh, uh, I heard there's a work here on the lemon lime farm over there. If you want, yeah, I can ask for you. And they'll be like, yeah, sure. And then you have to move to this new farm and find work there. And then you work there for a month and then it's like, oh, it starts, wet season is starting, so it's raining. So you can't work in lemon limes for uh, weeks at a time. So you're like, okay, I need to finish my farm work. I need to do this, I need to find work. So then you talk again with people around you and they're like, oh, well, I heard there's people looking for uh, the avocado season is starting in this area. And, uh, and you're like, oh, okay. So then you apply for that job and that's how I got contacts and that's how you get these work most of the time. And you just have to be prepared to, okay, I've been working for one month. Okay, there's no more work. I gotta find another place to work. And then you work for another month and you're like, okay, I gotta find some more work. <laughs> so it's always kind of the same beat and you kind of get used to it. I would say on the second year it's easier because you know more farms, uh, how more it works. The first time can be a bit, uh, s uh, how can I say, surprising and you're like, oh, okay, I thought I was going to work three months straight in a farm, but it doesn't work out like that. Uh, some big farms offer the uh, multiple fruits, which can be good. Uh, like when I worked for uh, How Farming, 
they they had uh, avocado uh, they had coffee beans they had banana they had uh, blueberries so they always kind of needed you for change place to place but i would say that's uh, not what happens all the time it's only a few farms that have this kind of stuff or the most places will just be you'll work for a couple of months maybe one month maybe a month and a half maybe two months depends on the seasons too uh, sometimes uh, they'll say there's two months of work and finally everybody picks really fast and after a month you're out of work uh, sometimes they'll say okay there's one month of work and you'll go there and they'll be oh well finally it's gonna be a month and a half you have to be very adaptive and you have to be ready to move to multiple farms and just keep a close eye on what you're doing usually you you'll see it it happens around you you know like if the boss starts giving you a couple of days off uh, you're like oh, okay maybe I need to find some more work if the boss is like okay we're gonna work through this week and next week and the other week you're like okay I'm gonna have enough work for a while <laughs> How much you earn and how much you save. Anything you can explain that? Mm, I can't remember how much I earned. I think it was like 22 something. Yeah. I think 23, 24. Yeah, 23, 24 is that the rate? Yeah. How many hours first? Working on farms, uh, you don't have like a normal set of hours, I could say. Uh, first of all, when you start a season and multiple fruits, uh, you'll be picking less and you'll be uh, selective picking. Uh, as the season advances, you'll be picking more and more uh, fruits that are bigger. Or, uh, sometimes I'll go, okay, don't go in this row because we're picking every second row uh, to let those fruits grow bigger. And at the end, you have a stripping. So sometimes you'll start off the week, uh, you'll start off your work there, and you'll be working uh, 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week, like just 10 hour days, uh, five days a week. And the more it'll go, you'll be working six days a week. Uh, and then at the end, when it's the last week of stripping, you're working seven days straight. Uh, so I couldn't say a really a normal number of hours, but I'd say it's over 40 and it's under 80, you know. As for the price, uh, I'm not sure right now. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing piece rate, that's going to be according to where you are. Uh, and how much they give per bin and I would say if you're gonna get this kind of job ask around how many bins do you pick of this because uh, picking a bin of uh, watermelon is a lot easier than picking a bin of cherries or picking a bin of lemon lime is a lot uh, harder than a, a bin of uh, of mangoes oh, it depends on the size of your fruit it depends on a couple of stuff but uh, if you're paying hourly rate, I believe right now it's at 23, 24, uh, something like that. It's around that. That's usually a good amount to earn, you know. Okay, so this is a big issue on how much money you can save. Like I've said earlier, depends on the number of hours you're making, uh, depends on how much you're using. Uh, I personally was around with some Europeans who would uh, spend a lot of money. They'd like to party on the weekends. They'd like to to go hard, if I, I can say. So they weren't making as much money. But as I'm a more conservative person, I save my money to future tripping. Um, I I could save maybe 500 bucks a week. You know, uh, I, I was still making over a thousand dollars. But I had to pay rent, I had to pay fuel, I had to pay uh, insurances, uh, you know, all these expenses, they, they get pretty high. But at saving 500 bucks a week uh, is a good amount, I find. It's, it's you know, it's uh, $2,000 a month. You can work three months, you'll have maybe six grand, uh, be able to travel for a while. So that would be like my minimum I could save. Of course, when I was working uh, at the start of the seasons, I saved a bit less. But as the season grew along longer, uh, I could save more because sometimes I did really big pays. When you're working seven days a week, ten hours a day, you can save some more money. Yeah, 
There's a lot of people who don't have any skill sets and do this just uh, to get by in Australia and uh, I could say a lot of these people are having fun and they're liking it because uh, they're meeting new people, you know, that you come from a different country, you meet all these different country people and they're all in the same situation as you and everybody's having fun on Friday, on Saturday, whenever your weekend is due. Uh, so yeah, I, even me, you know, I found it fun, the situation with meeting these people, you know, knowing new people, like, like right now I met so many new people I could go in any country and I know a person from every country where I could stay at because I've just been friends with them. And I believe that those that had finished their farm work and were doing it freely seem to have more fun than people who were like, okay, I got four months left on my visa, I need to do my farm work. They seem to be found it more an obligation than actually have fun. And once you've done your farm work, uh, when it's not an obligation anymore, you get to find the place that goes according to you, you know? If you're like, well, this work is hard on me, I'm gonna go to this other place where I know my friends went and I'm gonna be joining my friends, having fun, and I know it's easier over there.